Welcome back. Today we will be talking about assessment of work effort and fatigue under the physical methods. So, we already started learning about different uh, method uh, like techniques uh, in related to physical methods. So, today we will take up the work effort and the fatigue. Few only we will be learning, there are many more. However, due to course time, uh, we will be taking two major uh, tool which are normally being used by the ergonomics researchers. So, first let us understand what are those. First, we will be learning about Borg scale. It is a subjective method. We have two types of Borg scale. We will be learning both and the muscle fatigue analysis or muscle fatigue assessment. So, MFA which is also again a kind of uh, you know combination of subjective and objective rating and it gives you an understanding or kind of indexing which says that is this work is suitable for so many hours or not ok. So, these types of when we are doing some kind of physical activity how our muscles are getting fatigued so that we will be talking about in MFA. Okay, so, these two tools we will be learning specifically for today's session. So, let us start with the Borg scale. Everybody understand who is Borg. So, uh, Professor Borg who is really a very uh, you know a prominent research science like you know prominent uh, scientific board person you no know, science person who, who develop lot of things in the field of ergonomics and occupational health and his contribution towards uh, you no know, you no know, assessing the um, subjective fatigue or subjective uh, exertion is very very important to understand and learn and this is so uh, simple tool that any person can use that to understand or assess the preliminary um, uh, exertion level by a worker of a, of a worker ok. So, let us start with that. So, perceived exertion in the box uh, scale or box uh, fatigue assessment scale in that we actually what we do we try to understand what is perceived level of exertion by the person who is actually operating or actually working in that particular situation. So, perceived exertion and difficulty level measurement were introduced for understanding the physical work and its cost ok. So, the way a person experiences the work will depend on his or her adaptability, performance and satisfaction. So, here two very important concept were being introduced. First is if it is all about the person's perception, the, uh, the, the person who is actually working, the operator, their perception ok. So, if uh, on a similar uh, level of job, two person can adapt uh, or two person can take different time to adapt that particular situation. So, the level of uh, fatigue or level of exertion will be different from one person to another person. So, person's capacity or person's capability to adapt the situation, person's performance on that particular situation and how satisfied they are in that particular situation all these are being considered in this particular scale. And based on these dif different uh, uh, level, the perception or uh, you know per perceived exertion also will change, level of perceived exertion also will change. The subjective experience uh, measurement method and is used for verbal expression defining the scale points for the rating. So, that, that way we actually use box. Uh, scale. We have two different Borg scale that we are going to descri describe in the next slides. So, what is the particular procedure that we are going to follow? First, we are going to identify the physical work that to be you no know, studied. So, we need to understand what kind of physical work we are going to study 
by this particular scale. So, we need to identify that particular work. Then collect the responses from the person who is performing the physical work and we need to rate that into the Borg scale. Okay? So, first we will be discussing the Borg's RPE scale. RPE means rate of perceived exertion. So, how much the person, the worker is perceiving about that particular exertion. It was uh, developed in 1998. You can understand it is not very, very old tool. It is only few decades old tool. Okay. So, this part, uh, particular scale was very much connected with any kind of activity where you are you know, doing some kind of physical exertion. Okay. Borg's RPE scale is always connected with some activity where somebody is doing some physical activity. Okay. So, where uh, you know you are using cardiac uh, muscle uh, like cardiac um, capacity to work on. Okay. So, you are doing lot of muscular activity. So, this tool for measuring an individual's effort and exertion, breathlessness and fatigue during any physical work. This is very important. RPE scale that uh, rate of perceived exertion scale developed by Borg is only applicable where we are involved in a particular physical type of work. So, used to monitor and guide the exercise intensity. Initially, it was for the, you know, uh, when somebody is exercising, we, we use this particular scale to understand what is the kind of intensity level the person is working uh, so that we can control the exercise module. Okay. This particular scale starts at 6, ends at 20. Now, it, it has very nice connection with our heart rate, you know, approximate heart rate. So, what it says heart rate is equal to 10 into the scale value. Suppose you are at the level of 6, that means your heart rate supposed to be near around 60. Okay. So, what, what we do? We say that suppose somebody said my rate of perceived exertion is 7. So, we can predict that it is somewhere near around 70. It is not that exact 70. Here we have to be very uh, clear that it is not that heart rate is exactly 70. It can vary from somewhere around 65 to 75 okay because next point of this particular scale is 80 where may 8 where we can say that you know heart rate is 80 again this can vary from 75 to 85 it is approximation it says that it is possible that heart rate is near to that region because from 6 to 7 it is a 10, 10 bits gap, 7 to 80 it is 10 bits gap. Okay. So, the heart rate can be there, can be somewhere in this particular region. Okay. So, it has very much direct connection with your heart, uh, with the worker's heart rate. So, physical activity. So, those activities are causing increase, increment in your heart rate due to work can be rated or the exertion level can be rated using this particular scale and uh, researchers can easily identify what is the possible level of or perceived level of exertion by that particular person act in actual. Okay. So, that is box RPE scale. Now, this looks like this, like the whole scale, you know, looks like this. So, it has major three division. So, you can see the this blue color is like, you know, kind of light exertion level. So, 110 till 100, like this is 11. So, 
till 110 kind of heartbeat if you are having. So, you are doing some kind of light physical work, ok. It is all about physical activity. Whereas, this particular section uh, talks about uh, you know maybe you know heart rate starting from 120 to 160 and this is very very heavy so 170 to 200. Now why 60 and why 200? Now here this particular scale was developed for the young adult ok. So, it is expected the people who are around the age of 20-25 that particular range they are they were the major um, you know, number of participant in this particular study and the scale is developed based on that. So, we, we know what is the uh, theoretically possible maximum heart rate. So, it is 220 minus your age ok. So, it is expected who is uh, like the person of 20 years of age can achieve a heart rate of maximum possibly of 200 beats per minute as per this scale. Now, this is completely theoretical ok. It is theoretical explanation. However, in practical pushing someone to to you know till this 200 beats per minute is is absolutely depending on the total experimental setup and what is the kind of experimental objectives ok. And this scale is like you know we, we take observation from the participant ok. We try to understand what is the kind of perceived exertion level for them. So, if someone is do, uh, saying that my level of perceived exertion is tw 20, it does not mean it is always 200 beats per minute ok. It, it says it is maximum possible that they are actually trying. So, they are at the very very high level of their exertion level. It may be 80 bits per minute or may be 190 bits per minute. It's, 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 it's actually you know it is at the maximum possible level for that particular person, for that particular person. So, the scale looks like although it is very much connected to the heart rate like you know bits per minute, but at the higher values these are theoretically correct, but you know in practical we may not see 200 bits per, per minute to achieve such level ok. That is quite uh, difficult or uh, I would rather say it is dangerous to someone to push up to that level for a particular person. So, we really need to see actual reserve heart rate when the person is working or exercise in different other method and then only we can uh, push someone to the maximum exertion in theoretically ok. Now, this particular uh, scale that is rate of perceived exertion was very much connected to the uh, physical activity. So, somebody if they are doing the manual activity, so they are uh, you know as so, so it is a linear progression ok. If you are doing more work your heart rate is increasing more ok. So, level 1, one pattern of heart rate may be 670 beats per minute. So, you are increasing the level of exertion it is going towards next level of uh, you know heartbeat may be 70 or 80 something like that. So, it is a linear progression. So, so, when somebody is working physically, so manual activity is there. However, if you look at the industrial revolution, we, we see that when somebody you know uh, due to due to different changes due to automation in the industry, most of the work in different uh, industry became sedentary in nature. So, in that case, the person actually is not physically 
uh, doing lot of activity they are sitting in a particular uh, place uh, sitting in a sedentary position and doing lot of activity that doesn't mean that they are not getting exerted of course due to work they are that their exertion level is increasing however that is not very much connected to the heart rate Okay, if somebody is working for four hours, sitting in a table chair position, uh, no, in a uh, sedentary posture, sedentary work is being done by particular. Uh, by that particular person it is not that heart rate will increase. However, there will be some kind of exertion. Okay. In on the other side, if the same uh, number of hours like 2 hours if somebody is doing some kind of physical activity like you know lo load lifting, load shifting, uh, pulling, pushing definitely heart rate will increase and that can be reflected in the box RPA scale. But for the first case it is not really possible to get the reflection of uh, exertion level in the RPA scale because there is not such increment in the heart rate because the RPA scale mostly associated with the physical exercise whereas in the sedentary activity there is less physical exercise there is actually no physical exercise they are doing the job in a sedentary condition. To understand the exertion level of such cases there is a new development by the same person Gunnar Borg that is CR10 scale, category ratio scale. Okay. So, what exactly it says? It says that it incorporates the best properties of category rating. It talks about the category rating scale for absolute level of intensity and a ratio scale for good metric properties. It is a general intensity scale with special anchors to measure the exertion and the pain. Now, how it looks like? It looks like it starts, so RP scale is linear scale, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, linearly it is increasing. If the exertion level is increasing, the level of um, uh, the rating also increasing in a linear level, linearly. Whereas, if you look at this particular scale, CR10 scale, it starts with 0 then increment is up to 0.3 whereas in the next level when there is an another increment it is only 0.2 here also it is 0.2 then again 0.3 then 0.5 0.5 0.5 then 1 1 1 1 increment right so this scale is not really a linear scale however we can understand the level of exertion for a person who is doing the job in sedentary condition. So, it has some this type of numbering these values along with that we have verbal expression. So, if it is 0 we, uh, we try to uh, connect it as the no uh, exertion level at all that is no uh, exertion. So, the person is relaxed whereas after 11 we do not have any numbering it is some you know marks star marks it says absolute maximum. So, it, it absolutely depend on the person ok. So, for a person for uh, for a uh, uh, two for two different person this is uh, this may be the level of exertion may be different because it is perceived by that particular person. So, like that we have some verbal expression over here as well. Okay. So, this is CR10 scale category ratio scale. Now, we as I am telling for each and every tool that there are some advantages and there are some disadvantages for this particular 
two scales also has some advantages so first let us understand about the rpe scale it's easy to use and instruction are very very simple it is linear relations are obtained from work with the high aerobic demand as i said it's very much connected with the heart rate and which is linear in nature CR10 scale has an advantage of determining absolute stimulus response function and can be used for most kind of experiences okay rp scale only possible to use where you have physical activity whereas CR10 scale can be used for uh, any kind of activity okay although it they have some kind of disadvantages so rp scale responses do not reflect true growth function absolutely as i mentioned earlier and can be used only for perceived exertion and related symptoms in case of cr10 scale it is more complicated and in its construction than the uh, perceived exertion other perceived exertion tool and more time is required for the explanation instruction and training it takes lot of time because you know when we are talking about a particular scale so when it is jumping 0 then 0.3 then 0.5 then uh, there are always a question why okay so we need lot of explanation lot of understanding and training to explain all these the characteristics of this particular scale so this that that kind of disadvantages is it has okay so these are the two uh, scale which are always being used mostly being used not always mostly being used for uh, understanding the perceived exertion box rpe scale and box uh, cr10 scale okay so uh, what kind of training do you need so it's uh, for borg's rp scale few minutes of uh, instruction is sufficient for the subject to understand the scale and know how to rate overall perceived exertion or specific strain whereas for uh, cr10 scale we need detailed instruction and uh, follow up to verify that the subject understand the scale or not because it's it's not really linear and the verbal expressions are not available for each point okay it's a quite lengthy scale so we really need to uh, take a detailed measure to train this particular uh, scale to the subject now what are the tools required scale constructed and designed by borg with no additional colors or pictures so subject can give the response verbally or point it out with a figure of uh, finger or the mouse so you you take the you know, scale in a printed copy or in a soft copy you just ask the person to point it out so it's a very very simple tool to actually implement okay and these tools are very uh, um, uh, easy to implement with any kind of person literate not literate you know illiterate uh, layman um, uh, construction workers uh, uh, you know from in the vegetable market or wherever you actually go okay these tools are so simple that you can really really implement it very easily and you can get lot of you know understanding about the level of perceived exertion okay so these are all about rpe and cr10 scale developed by professor gunnar bod now i will take you to the next uh, technique or uh, next tool which talks about the muscle fatigue assessment or analysis again it talks about how fatigue your muscles are and how long you can do the activity are you able uh, can you continue for longer hours or not okay so let us take some kind of brief uh, preliminary understanding or introduction about this particular tool so e, this particular uh, particular tool is developed by rogers and william in 1987 to characterize the discomfort 
and described by workers on a uh, automobile assembly line and fabrication task so initially when they developed this particular tool they developed in in a assembly line for the automobile uh, manufacturing unit so what is the kind of characteristics so when you are talking about assembly line in a automobile industry uh, in a fabrication task it mostly by the uh, your distal upper extremities okay so wh wherever similar kind of situations are available we can use this particular tool to assess the kind of muscle fitting so each muscle group is rated for each task for a job based on which priority of changes is suggested it can be used for evaluating production task having fewer than 12 to 15 repetition per minute with the same muscle group ideal for team evaluation of a job or a task so this is very important when we would like to do some kind of team activity this particular tool is very very useful and we can get a broader picture of this part, uh, of this particular activity or of this particular job okay so team evaluation is very easy with this particular tool so let us understand this particular tool talks about neck shoulder back arm or elbow wrist hand and fingers legs and knee ankle feet and toes these all uh, one two three four five six seven body parts so first i will explain one and you can replicate the same process with all other body parts so it consists of two major table these tables are pre-computed table table one is the worksheet for the muscle fatigue assessment method where the three numbers rating is given for each body part of the selected task and this rating or score is based on the elements like effort intensity effort duration and effort frequency so effort intensity effort duration and effort frequency one two three these three factors we are going to evaluate for each body part for neck shoulder back arm elbow wrist hand fingers legs knees and ankle feet toes okay so three major component we are going to identify in table 2 so this this we will be doing from the table 1 in table 2 the priority for change so from the table 1 we will get all these rating and from the table 1 there are pre computed you know compositions where we will understand which part of uh, the exertions are uh, immediately required for change so where our intervention can start in the beginning so maybe there are four five changes are required or two three changes are required this particular table like table two will tell us which is most dangerous and which need to take care uh, uh, in the very very beginning okay so so prioritization of your activity that we will be taking from the table 2 okay from the table 2 we will be explaining each table in the next uh, slides so table 2 is the priority for change table which represent the fatigue level based on the scores generated from the table 1 on the basis of uh, uh you know level of fatigue low medium high very high so these are the kind of you know uh, levels we will be identifying observed in table 2 necessary steps can be taken to reduce the fatigue level so these necessary steps are actually your intervention your uh, uh, you know input to change the activity okay so that we will be doing uh, based on these results 
So, let us understand the process. It is very, very simple. It is a linear process. So, first you have to identify the uh, problem in a particular, um, uh, you know, whatever the jobs you are doing in that you have to identify the problem job, identify the problem task in that particular job, select the task, you have to select that particular task to analyze, determine the effort intensity levels for each body part. Okay. So, here actually your task will start using that table 1. Okay. Once you define that, so if what you have to do, effort duration that is in seconds level for each body part, effort frequency and then from all these both in the beginning effort intensity, effort duration and effort frequency from all these three numbers you have to go for the table 2 where you will get the, the numbering and from that you will get the change which task is actually is going to get uh, which body part is going to get the priority. So, that understanding you will get from this level. So, let us understand or let us take an example how do we actually calculate it. Okay. So, in detail procedure if we talk about uh, in section A suppose we are talking about arm and wrist analysis step what you have to do? You have to locate your upper arm position, lower arm position locate the wrist position because these are the parts of your upper arm wrist uh, portion wrist twist is there any twist in your wrist uh, lock up posture uh, the uh, for all these for you have to specify it in the table a then you have to assess the muscle you score add the force load score and find the table c for uh, section B that it neck, trunk and leg analysis, you have to uh, give uh, the, uh, you have to understand the neck, trunk and leg, okay. Then you have to find the table B, then C, uh, so muscle U score and four score and this find the value from table C, okay. Now, first understand after this particular thing, we need to understand that what exactly happening in this particular level. Okay. So, first is your effort level. How do we do? There are four category, light, moderate, heavy and very heavy that is the effort level 4. So, there are some uh, there are some verbal description. So, what it talks about if it is light it says head turned uh, now I am talking about only for neck for hand for uh, leg for trunk there are definitions are different that is available in the next slide okay so right now i am talking about only neck so when i am talking about neck if it is light what it says head turned partial uh, partly to side back or slightly forward only slightly it is changed so if it is moderate head turned to the side head you know little towards back, wholly back and head forward about 20 degree. So, any such condition cause the number 2. For case of 3, if it, if we talk about heavy, in that case, say, uh, no, same as moderate but with force and weight, head are stretched forward. So, if you are, no, your head is stretched forward, so some load is there on your head, then it can be 3. Now, the number 4, uh, what it says? There is no such description. Only it says if less than 70 percent, 75 percent of all workers can exert this effort, then it is, uh, you know, 4. That means, only some people are in a position 
to complete this job that means it is very very tedious or very very um, uh, strong you, you need lot of effort. So, it only says if it is only less than 75 percent because you know we expect in a whole population your 100 percent people will be doing that particular job. However, if it is only less than 75 percent uh, of all workers can complete that job then only we talk it as take it as Four. So, normally if we go to the industry, we get values 1, 2 or 3, this 4 is very very rare. Now, this talks about effort level. In the next portion that is the continuous effort duration. Okay. So, continuous effort duration if it is less than 6 second then it is 1, 6 to 20 second it is 2, 20 to 30 second it is 3 and if it is more than 30 second then definitely it is 4. In case of effort frequency if it is less than 1 per minute so 1 task less than 1 or 1 task per minute if it is 1 to 5 per minute 5 to 15 per minute and 15 more than 15 per minute if that is so then 1 2 3 4 so like that we get three varieties of rating one is for effort level second is for your continuous effort duration third is for your effort frequency okay so this this is possible for th this type of rating can be possible for every body parts all these seven portion right so here for an example in a cnc operator what they have tried to do is first is your uh, neck that is the uh, effort level is one that they identified uh, continuous uh, effort duration that they identified three so here three then frequency effort is two that they identify this is for an example so total next score is 1 3 2 1 3 2 now same thing can be obtained for different body parts in the next table these all are pre-computed table only what you have to do based on your situation you have to identify the position you have to get the rating let us see this so this is for neck shoulder back arm and elbow wrist hand and finger legs ankle feet and toes so these all verbal description these all verbal descriptions are present based on these description based on your situation you have to get the marking the one two three those levels okay so for each one so for for last example for neck we received a value one three two okay so for this also maybe suppose here uh, as it is shoulder so we have right and left division for um, arm also you have left and left division like that it is possible so you sub you need to get the ranking for each part suppose for here two one two or here two one one Okay, so something all this type of rating you will be getting from this particular table. Here you, it's a it's a worksheet, so you can uh, def name that job that you are going to analyze and name the specific task that you are going to analyze, which date and name of the person who is actually analyzing. This is a typical worksheet for your muscle fatigue, fatigue assessment or analysis. Now, let us see uh, the uh, from the table 2, how do we get an understanding that is this particular job is uh, light, moderate or high or very high. Okay. So, all these combination 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 all these combinations if you get then it says 
the effort level that you know total um, uh, the, the, the activity it, the priority level is kind of low whereas if it is these categories then it is moderate these categories it is high and if anything in combination of these categories so any any existence of any point of 4 always it is very very high so then it is 4 okay so very high so l m h and v h so once we get these numbers in this particular table we can say so 1 3 2 where we are 1 3 2 that means this particular marking right so we can say this is moderate now 2 1 2 2 1 2 where it is 2 1 2 is here right so it says light so i can say low okay then 2 1 1 2 1 1 again it is low so so we can say it is low okay so like that we can keep on giving numbering so moderate light light like that we will give numbering to all these portion and then we can decide which one is in our priority list so from here we get the categorization of the priority for the change so th that way we use this particular scale to understand where is the major problem and how do we rectify it and once we rectify it again we use this or implement this particular tool and try to see after uh, rectification or after change in the design or after change in the or modification in the design is there any improvement or not suppose this particular case neck is having 132 so that means moderate so for this case i should start my intervention over here now once the design is changed the process there is a change in the process or some intervention happen if it is coming down to any one of these value that means your intervention is successful whereas if it goes somewhere here that means your intervention is not successful it, it may happen this particular case for neck has gone down somewhere here however some other body part suppose leg or ankle has come here so in that case also it is not successful in total it should come down uh, after the intervention also you need to take care that productivity is not getting hampered uh, due to the changes in these kind of uh, design okay so that also you need to take care of uh, as uh, no you need to take care simultaneously so this is the way how do we implement muscle fatigue assessment or analysis tool for for the you know industrial you know analysis or uh, evaluation of particular job or task in case of physical muscle fatigue now again uh, what are the advantages as you understood it's very very simple to use evaluates all body muscle groups interactions are evaluated to estimate the fatigue identity because it talks about three major component one is your effort level second is your continuous effort duration not only effort level not at the point prevalence okay effort level is not just once it talks about how long it is being continued so time is also being considered and how frequently so all these three factors are in consideration so actually you are getting an holistic uh, a holistic uh, no um, result for uh, for the fatigue okay so interactions are evaluated uh, to estimate this fatigue and identifies the fatigue producing patterns of work and shows how to improve them and several strategies can be suggested to uh, suggested for improving the task during that particular analysis 
there are some disadvantages. So, judgment is required as it is a, a no semi quantitative method because a uh, few things like continuous effort duration definitely you can measure specifically effort frequency also you can measure frequently whereas the effort level is a kind of perception okay it's it's perceived it's a subjective so it's it's really not completely quantitative method it's a semi quantitative method so you know judgment is required uh, one site job information has to be collected by that particular analyst analyst because if you do not have those information you will not be able to do the job or uh, do the analysis task have to be analyzed separately so you have to first understand the task you have to analyze that particular task then only you can go ahead uh, muscle cycles are to be focused instead of the task cycle not the the task cycle you have to mainly talk about the muscle cycles and less effective if done by one analyst rather than a team of people on a particular production floor as I mentioned, this is very good tool when we are talking about the uh, understanding of the team effort. So, productivity also can be uh, taken care when we are doing in a team. So, this the, the, so if you are not doing in a team, then it becomes very difficult for uh, to get a correct data. You can do, however, there may be some kind of biasness and you will not get the actual figure. Uh, 1 to 2 hours are required for uh, learning this particular rating method and analysis um, you know can be take uh, can take to 15 to 30 minutes now again it depends how quickly the person the researcher understand it and can in a position to implement it okay paper pencil and stopwatch is required of course nowadays on the spot analysis are not being done always what we do we try to um, uh, videotape the whole process and we do the analysis uh, after coming back to the laboratory okay so that way it's it's not very uh, diff difficult um, instruments that you require very simple instrument which which is easily available with um, everyone and every researcher can really use this particular tool to analyze the situation okay so these all about the muscle fatigue assessment and also these are all about box uh, two scales rp scale and cr10 scale so these are the two uh, major uh, way how do actually evaluate the fatigue physical fatigue and uh, there are many other uh, techniques available uh, specifically when we go for the instrumentation there are many other techniques but the, these are the two uh, pen and paper method that you can use to assess the um, fatigue at the physical level okay so that's all for today thank you mm -hmm.